Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Kennedy. I'm a cloud and software architect. And in this video, I'm going to show to you how to create your own Kubernetes cluster locally using micro cakes and multi-pass. So here we go. As you can see, I read at the canonical micro cakes documentation page. But first of all, we need to understand what is micro cakes what is multi-pass multi-pass is a solution that enables us to create our linux virtual machines using only the command line so it's really better than those like uh, virtual box for example where we need to create our linux virtual machines depends on the ui that's not necessary when we are using command line interface i believe that if you are dev, probably you prefer to use the common line interface rather than use uh, the UI. So that is what is so nice about multi-pass. And MicroCade. MicroCade is a solution that Canonical creates to enable users to run uh, Kubernetes workloads in small environments, such as development environments or an IoT environment. That's the idea. And what we are going to do here, basically we are going to create a single node cluster by creating a Linux virtual machine using Pass and installing micro -cates inside this Linux virtual machine. And to test if our local setup is working correctly, we will deploy an application inside that Linux virtual machine expose that application in a way that we need to be able to access this application from our browser and so it will be really nice what we are going to do here and after that at the final i'm going to show you some tricks too so let's go um, the first thing that you need to do here it's basically install multi-pass I already have it installed, but if you don't, basically the only thing that you need to do is to run this command. The documentation is suggesting you to use the snap package manager. Uh, let me show you my terminal, multi-pass ls. And so I already have it installed, and, but I don't have any instance, and that's it is because I'm going to create this instance right now. So the command that we need to run to create our instance, it's the multi-pass launch. Let's check here the parameters that we can specify. So using multi-pass-8, we can check here that we can specify CPU, disk, memory, and the name. I'm going to use all these parameters right now creating a Linux virtual machine. So let's do that. Multi-pass, launch. I will use the name here, microcakes um, cluster. And I'm going to use two CPUs and I'm going to use two gigabytes of memory and I'm going to use 20 gigabytes of uh, disk so here we go let's check here it should not take too much time because we are only creating our uh, linux virtual machine here we still need to do some more steps and it's really sucked creating this uh, now that you can see that we are creating a virtual machine only using a single line command that's that's really great so starting micro -cates cluster let's check you can check that i don't need it to specify an, uh, an image to the virtual machine creation because we are already creating the default linux virtual machine so here we go multi-pass Unless we can check here that our instance is already running, right? So I'm going to 
what we need to do now. Basically, we need to access this instance and install MicroKates there. So, to access this instance, I need to copy the name of the instance, multi-pass, and I need to execute command called shell. I will shell this instance. Here we go. Now we have our MicroKates cluster. We are already inside of it. So, what I need to do now? I can install Docker, I could install any thing that I want, but I want to install MicroKates. So, let's check how we can do that in the documentation. Basically, we need to run this command snap install microcates classic type and here we can specify the version that we want from our kubernetes i don't want to specify the 1.18 stable version because i think that i can use a more updated version like 1.26 so i will pop only this piece and run the command let's check Uh, okay, it's installing microcates. Microcates, uh, we are going to have almost the same syntax that we have when we are using kubectl. Basically, the change is, is that we are going to have a prefix. So instead of kubectl get pods, we are going to use microcates.kubectl get pods. That's the only difference. Uh, in terms of syntax. Here we can see 70%, okay. 90%, awesome. Oh, great. I was right. 1.26 is the version, the last one. That's also awesome because we can leverage of features that Kubernetes released in the most recent version. I like to do that. Having our microcades installed in our cluster, we can create our first workload or we can create more uh, nodes. We don't need to have a single node cluster only because we are running it locally. We can create multiple nodes uh, when we are using microcates, but uh, it's not the case in this sample, but you need to know that you can. So we are already finishing 80%, 100%, awesome. It's really easy. In this case, we are setting up our cluster. I don't know if you are already set up a cluster using the Kubernetes QBADM, but it's really more complicated than this common. Okay, great. It's already installed. So let's check here. Micro case, as I said, dot kubectl. I will try to get the nodes to understand if our nodes are read. In this case, only this node. Insufficient permissions. Uh, okay, great. So, what do you need to do here? Before running our microcates kubectl common, we need to add the user Ubuntu to the microcates group. So, I'm going to copy this command to do that. Probably I don't have this command, but uh, I will show you. Okay, no problem. And I will restart the machine. Okay, great. Let's check right now if I can do my get nodes. The idea is to check if our node is a red in the red status. Let's check. Awesome news. The node is already ready. This means that we are able to run um, and create any pod that we want. So let's test. So what I will do here, microcase.kubectl, I will run a pod called pod01. 
I will use the nginx image. Okay. Let's check if your report was created correctly. Apparently, it's continue creating status running. Awesome. Our pod is already running, so we can curve our nginx pod to check if this is working correctly. So let's do that. What I will do here is basically add here the output wide type so I can get the IP so I will turn that IP to check that our application is running correctly and uh, here we go our application is running correctly welcome to nginx that's awesome so but this is not what we want exactly. We want to be able to access this application from our browser instead of need to log in the Linux virtual machine and curl the pod. We need to be able to access from our browser. How can we do that? The first thing that we need to do is basically to expose our pod using a node port service. This way our service Nginx in this case will be running in a specific port and we will be able to get the IP from this instance and put this IP in the browser in the port that the service is running and if everything runs fine we should be able to handle this HTML. So let's check if we can do that. Microcates how uh, kubectl now i'm going to expose this pod so i will use the expose pod expose pod and here the pod name and i want to use here the name of the service will be microcates nginx service right i will use type node port and i will put here uh, name type, I will target the port 80. So, as in the previous command, when I was creating the pod, I didn't specify any uh, port. The Nginx in the container of the Nginx is running in the default port, which is the 80. So, I'm going to hit the enter. And okay, let's check if our service was created. Awesome, our service was created, and we can see that the service is running uh, hosted in this port 31628. Awesome, and we need to get the IP from this uh, instance, and let's check if we are able to access this application from the browser. So let's do that. 316628. And awesome. We are able to access our application. And that's pretty great. But this is not enough. Well, we don't want to be necessary to get inside our Linux virtual machine to kubectl our workloads. Is there a way that we could kubectl our workloads from outside of this machine, from our own machine? Yes, there is a way and I'm going to show you how we can do this trick. So let's do that. What we need to do here is basically copy the kubeconfig to our machine, change the IP from the kubeconfig to the IP of this Linux virtual machine, and everything will work fine. You will be able to kubectl your application from your all machine instead of the necessary to log in the Linux virtual machine. So let's do that. I will here. Uh, microcates, I will get the config. Microcates kubectl 
trophy view. Here we can check that the certificate authority data is submitted. So I'm going to use the raw option. This way I can have the entire config. So, okay, great. I already have this, this config, right? So what I'm going to do is basically get outside of this machine and now I'm going to my machine. So let's do that. Okay, great. Now I am outside the machine and I have here my instance running. Okay, and I have this IP. We are going to use this IP right now. So what do you need to do? Here we can create, for example, a folder. I will create a folder called microcate lab. Okay, great. And I'm going to enter on this folder and write the cube config that I just copied. So I will write this in the polish away. Basically, I need to do here a not file, file path. And now I need to pass here my path. That is users, my user, and the directory that I just created is microkates lab. So in a, the name of the file will be mycube.yaml. But we don't need to. We need to remember that we need to edit the IP. So I'm going to edit the IP before I have the IP here in the browser. So I'm going to copy this. Or we have the IP here too. It's the same one. So let's put this IP here. Okay. And here we go. Now we have our cube config file pointing to our Linux uh, virtual machine. Let's create the file. Okay. The file is here. That's awesome. So now I should be able to query the workloads that I created inside my machine from outside my that machine. So let's try to do that. kubectl, I will do a get PO passing a Cube config and will be this one my config yaml and awesome now we are able to query our workloads from outside our machine but if you don't want to uh, pass the cube config uh, option in each command you can set up an environment variable too uh, let me show you here the search. That's okay. So let's set up this environment very because uh, this way it's better. We can put here the cube config variable and we can put here the path to our uh, cube config file. So we put here users, can he, and microcates lab and the file. Okay. And now we should be able to query without passing the cube config flag. That's awesome. We are able to query the workloads that we are creating uh, inside our multi-pass Linux virtual machine. This was what I had to use for today. I hope you enjoy it because now you know how to set up your own Kubernetes cluster locally. You know how to create your own Linux virtual machine. And that's it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you have any question, please let me know. And thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.